Ma Jiang, the forever liked game by every Chinese. The older generations enjoy it as an entertaining mind sport after lunch and dinner. They gather in the community centers or at someone's house, and is so ready to be the king of all the mahjong players in the neighborhood. Grandpa Nancy has a reputation of being the current mahjong king in the neighborhood due to his legendary performances at yesterday's games. Here, we can see an intense match between him and his sister, who came all the way from the neighborhood a block away and claims to be determined to take over the crown after Grandpa Nancy. There are many ways to play mahjong. In general, you try to get three mounts and a pair. A pair consists two identical pieces. A mount consists of a set of three pieces. It can either be numbers in consecutive number called chuo or three identical pieces called po. The numbered sets are dots, stripes, and wands, and there are also the four wings and three dragons. There are four identical pieces for each different pattern on the tile. People always have 13 pieces in their hand. They take one piece in at a time and have to give out one piece after taking the new piece in. And the four people just keep going in turns. Once the new piece you take in help you compose four mouths and a pair, you go ahead and call a win. Grandpa Nancy seems to be an expert at the field. However, the games ended with his sister winning. Welcome to the mass channel of We Love Mahjong TV. Now let's try to connect to Mahjong Master Nancy to see what she has for us today in the math studying of Mahjong. Hello everyone, this is Mahjong Master Nancy. Today's lesson is to love Mahjong. Now, let us ask ourselves what type of games we all love to play. Oh yes, it's the type that seems extremely hard yet allow us to win easily. So today, I will show you how we can win Mahjong easily by Winning without playing! Yes, you can win Mahjong without playing it. This is achieved by being the first of the four players to have 14 pieces in your hand after dealing. You can achieve this by being the host or the first person to draw and end up with 14 pieces right after dealing. And if you gain a winning combination, you will automatically win without playing the game. And today, we're here to calculate the probability behind such a favorable condition. With some understanding with the rules of the game, we understand that we need four sets of pawn or troll and a set of pair to win. When calculating the winning probabilities, we should be setting up certain initial conditions for a convenient and a convincing result. We will not include flower and season tiles since they are not commonly played in most of the situations. And we are excluding the probability of gowns because it counts as one set even though it consists four pieces and allows player 
used to hold more than thirteen tiles at a time and switches the deal order. Since the game does not start until the end of the dealing, and the tiles of each player were never revealed until the end of dealing, we will not worry about the order of the dealing because it won't affect our calculation. Also, we should keep in mind that the winning without playing condition only occurs if the player is the host, which is the position every player has an equal opportunity for. That is it with the initial conditions. Let's jump into the calculation. With the winning combinations, there are five conditions or situations. They may consist four pawns, or no chow, three pawns, which means one chow, two pawns, one pawn, and lastly no pawn, which is four chows. The pair is all the same for each situation. So let's calculate the probability for the pair first. So the first tile for the pair does not matter, since at this point no tile has been drawn yet, and any tile can be a part of the pair. So the first will be one hundred thirty-six over one hundred thirty-six, which is one. The second tile has to be the same as the first one. So it is four minus the first tile we already took out from the identical set, and over. One hundred thirty-six minus the tiles we have already drawn, which is also one. Using my fast calculating brain, we can conclude that the result probability is one over forty-five. After drawing the pair, we now have one hundred thirty-four tiles left. The first tile we want to draw for the pawn can be any tile as long as they do not belong to the four identical set from which we drew from the pair from, because then we won't have enough identical tiles for composing a pawn. Therefore, the probability for the first tile should be one minus the probability of drawing the two specific tiles, which is two over one hundred thirty-four. The next tile should be the same as the first one we have drawn. Therefore, it is three, since there is only three tiles left. That is the same as the first one. Over one hundred thirty-four minus one, the total number of tiles that's left. For the third tile in the set of pawns, it follows the same logic and is two over one thirty-four minus two. The resulting probability is, due to my fast and smart. Brings calculation、mm, three over eight thousand nine hundred eleven. We now have one hundred thirty-one tiles left. The second set follows the same logic as the first set of pawn. First, we subtract the unwanted tiles, which is two leftovers from the pair, and then the one leftover from the first set of the pawn. This way, we got the first tile in the set to be one minus two over one hundred thirty-one minus one over one hundred thirty-one. The second tile is the same as how we calculated the last set. We have three more tiles left that match the first one we drew, and put it over one hundred thirty-one minus one, which is the number of tiles left. The third is the same, two over one hundred thirty-one minus two. Multiplying all the probabilities together, we got my super smart brain tells me that it is equal to one hundred ninety-two over five four five zero two five. Now we have one hundred twenty-eight tiles left. As the same as the other two poem calculations, we take out the unwanted tiles first. For the first tile in the set, it is one minus two over one hundred twenty-eight minus one over one hundred twenty-eight minus one over one hundred twenty-eight, which is, by the way, one hundred twenty-four over one hundred twenty-eight. The the other tiles are all the same logic. They are three over one hundred twenty-eight minus one and two over one hundred twenty-eight minus two. The result is. Thirty-one over eight five three four four. 
We now have 125 tiles left, and finally we're here at the last set of pawn. The same rules apply. And my helpful calculator brain tells me that this whole thing is to be 720 over 1906500. And for the result, multiply all the probability for all the sets and you got as my super smart and fabulous brain tells me, it is 3.615 times 10 to the negative 16th power. This is quite a small probability if one aims to have a solid win, yet it is the only for one of the five situations of the winning without playing conditions. However, due to time issues, we're not going to calculate the probabilities for the other four situations. The number right here can be used as a reference if you want to have a win right after the draw with the least varied types of tiles. What will we need to know if we want to calculate the rest on our own? If you want to try it on your own, remember that chose have to be in a numerical order, which excludes the dragon and wing tiles from consideration. Moreover, remember that the exclusion we did for the pawns does not apply to chose because they only need one tile from one value for each set. Also, keep in mind that numbers 1 and 9 should be treated specially because they are the ends of the number trend and only connect to one tile while other number tiles connect to two. That is it for today's lesson. I hope it bored you out or really urged you to wanting to try out Mahjong at some time. Thank you. Thank you, Mahjong Master! After today's lesson, I believe that everyone now loves Mahjong. Now, let's hear what our audiences have to say. Mahjong is cool. Yay! I used to play Mahjong as a kid and I really like it. Mahjong is good. <laughs> Mahjong is cool. Mahjong is boss. Uh, I love Mahjong. Uh, Mahjong is super addicting, super fun. Uh, it's a great puzzle. Um, I hate it when there's a timer because I like freak out. Uh, but I love Mahjong. Mahjong will help you prevent Alzheimer's. Mahjong is a great game to play. Really, and I, I wish more people played it. <laughs> so at the first, there will be 336 over 360. First will be three. So first, there will be. So the first tile for the pair does not matter. Since at this point, no tile has been drawn yet, and any tile can be a part of the pair. So the first will be three, one, 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 three, six, 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 one, I don't know what to say. Did you say it? Mahjong's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay.